rational and open. I spent my whole life swimming in lies. Emily, what a waste. I feel like I know nothing. That I have to learn everything all over again. I'm a demon. I age more slowly. I can mentally manipulate people. I don't even know if it's a good thing or a curse. Frankly, I, I feel like I'm cursed. I hope I'll be able to control this new skill, otherwise my life will be hell. Damn it, what a mess. Come on, man up, Louis. I'm still the same old me. Demon or not, I'm still in charge of my actions. And this father, I know nothing about. Yes, I've still got a lot to learn. It's enough to drive you crazy. Everything I believed in, nothing holds true anymore. Pull yourself together, man. I need to find some answers. There's no way of being alone for a minute. Golden elixir. Sir Gregory? Good day, Louis. I think it would be good to talk. How are you feeling? I don't know. I understand. I heard that William spoke to you at last about our nature and our family. It's a good thing, but you must be a bit shaken up. That's the least you can say. I bid you welcome among us, Louis. Knowing William, he probably didn't go into any detail about our family, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. How many of us are there in the family? We are eight brothers and sisters. What do you mean by brothers and sisters if we can change bodies? You reason with logic. Uh, we have retained the human habit. When we first come into this world, we retain a certain attachment to our first envelope. If we are born as a man, we are brothers. If we are born as a woman, we are sisters. But I must admit, it has absolutely no real importance. They're just bodies. Well, tell me then, are there any other families like ours? There are officially seven, but we're the oldest and therefore the most powerful. What's Lord Mortimer's problem? I think he allows himself to be devoured by a need for recognition. Has he always been like that? More or less, but thinking about it, I believe that the birth of our latest sibling greatly accentuated his discomfort. Do you think he's jealous? I didn't realize you were so good at behavioral analysis. Indeed, William certainly is prone to jealousy. Finding one's place, notably in the eyes of our father, is not easy, and we each do what we can to succeed. But I can't justify this perpetual rebellion against our rules. Is there a head of the family? You'll see. You'll meet them all, of course. When you are ready, they created us and set out the rules, especially our father. As for our mother, she retired from the political stage. We don't see her much anymore. I think that all these questions simply bore her. I see. There is still much to learn. Yes, it's true. You've got some catching up to do, my boy. One thing you must understand regarding any disagreements that might arise between William and myself is his position with regard to mankind. What do you mean? Well, for centuries we've been trying to help and therefore preserve humanity. Monarchies are simple and practical. They enable us to inspire humanity efficiently, and I can't understand why William wants to replace them with democracy. But if your intention is not to dominate the human race, why not let them be master of their own destinies? I perfectly understand this type of reaction from you. 
less from William. The main thing you're lacking is time. Man is transient, and one of his particularities is that he does not learn from the errors of his peers. He uses up an incredible amount of energy building and destroying whatever he himself has put into place. If we weren't here to help them, guide them, I sincerely believe that humanity would have become extinct by now. We are eternal, Louis. When we plan ahead, we do it for the long term. Yes, I, I understand, but that's more like tyranny, isn't it? Well, it's all a question of your point of view. From man's point of view, I can understand how he would have that impression, if ever he found out. But don't forget your true nature. From the demon's point of view, in other words, ours, letting man do as he thinks fit would equate to letting him race to his own demise. But what about man's freedom to choose? That is man's worst enemy, Louis. Imagine a creature that dies without reaching the age of adulthood. It remains a child. We have to help him, otherwise he will put himself in danger. It has taken centuries for our family to establish relative peace between demons. Thanks to this policy, we have been able to decide everything by confining the other families to subordinate roles. And now William is obsessed with disrupting everything. Peace between demons? What do you mean? I'm not talking about conflicts within our family. If that was all there was, everything would be fine. But several other families, younger but nonetheless powerful, are trying to upset the balance. At present, we dominate most of the major countries around the globe. But some families are pushing, via less influential countries, to gain ground. Do you understand? As best I can, yes. When the time comes, you must take up a position on the political chessboard. I only hope your father doesn't take you down with him. Are you offering me an alliance? Louis, I do not believe that just because your father is mistaken, all is lost for you. You owe William nothing, so there's nothing obliging you to support him. I want you to make an informed choice. Now go and see your father, see what he has to say, and then think it over very carefully. That's exactly what I intended to do. Thank you, Uncle. Don't mention it. If I've been able to help you in any way, go now. Louis, I was sure you would stay. I'm proud of you. You have made the right choice. You must have been disappointed not to have been able to speak to Sarah one last time. I would have liked her to tell you herself. Well, I guess I'll never know now. True. Even so, there is one more thing I haven't told you about her. Sarah was my daughter. What? But... Why didn't you tell me the truth about her? I thought that might be too many truths to absorb at one time. I intended to tell you afterwards. You were in a hurry, so I made a decision. You've been able to understand and choose for yourself. How do you feel? Hard to say. Worried. I wonder where it's all going to end. What could be more normal? It may have been a bit brutal, but you've just grown up in a very short space of time. From now on, 
You can influence your own future. I will guide you. We've all the time we need. You're not the first to make me that offer. What do you mean by that? Your brother, Sir Gregory. Gregory. Why am I not even surprised? What did he say? I think he's worried about you. Worried? <laughs> Marvelous. That's just like him. You know, in a family like ours, we all have a role to play. And his is to worry about everyone else. Let me reassure you, there's no reason for him to worry about me. And what would my role be in all of this? That's for you to decide. I'm not trying to force you, Louis. I have high hopes for you, but the decision remains yours to make. I don't impose anything on anyone. I'm just following my own path. But where does it lead? Hmm, I, I suppose I should explain. For centuries now, demons have emerged in and around great leaders all over the world. But like true tyrants, they have governed with an iron fist in a studded glove. That's the impression I get. But you see, people's discontent is increasing, and they are too high up to hear it. They take themselves for gods. Sooner or later, the people will turn against us, just as they have in the past. Each time it's happened, many of us have died. We must master the humans, yes, but gently. And the best way of doing that is by allowing them a free choice, Louis. You really are trying to liberate men. Of course, not entirely, no. It is easier to keep control over people who slumber than people who are oppressed. A man with nothing to lose is a dangerous man. Whereas, if you give him a roof, food, and entertainment, he will do whatever you want. The best way of getting them to achieve something is to make them think it was their idea. For that, they have to feel as if they are free. Hang on, what do you mean? Look at the United States. From the start, I introduced an idea that will change everything. The idea that everything is possible. Everyone can become someone. Is there anything more beautiful? You mean it's not true? Man can move mountains when he believes it is in his own interest. And what nobler cause is there than his own freedom? Do you have any more examples? Of course. Talk to me about slavery. Well, take the slave trade, for example. It's an archaic practice that simply has to stop. Today, black slaves of America work for free and in unbearable conditions. Tomorrow, if you free the blacks and offer them work along with a salary, they will bless you for it. Then, they will be integrated into the system. They will be taxable. Once they are free, they will have to work for a roof, pay taxes, and feed their families. Maybe we could take away the civil rights of prisoners, for example. In this way, we'll keep control of all those who respect the system and benefit from the others as workforce. And what would you propose for women? They must be given the right to work and to vote. Look, at the moment, they don't work. They take care of raising children. What a mistake. We have to get them out of the house. Make them work. In this way, not only will they become consumers, but they will also delegate the job of education to the system. We could guide humanity from a young age, Louis, don't you see? Today, we are wasting too much time. What obscurantism? By harping on this concept of good and evil, guilt and redemption, look where men are now locked up in beliefs that should no longer exist. It's time for men to rediscover themselves and to take control of their lives, as they really are, without any moral judgment. Tell me what you think about progress. Progress is essential, Louis. It's the future. What else? Progress must liberate humanity from burdensome chores. Progress must replace man, whatever his presence is not obligatory. It creates both the desire and the need. It will liberate women, as soon as the machines are able to do all the chores in the home automatically. It will bring men together by bringing a faster means of locomotion. Look at the cultural revolution that printing brought about. But the most important of all has already been laid. 
the foundation stone, freedom of speech. The first amendment of the constitution. There must be opponents to every project. So above all, don't develop a one track approach. Otherwise man won't have enough room for expression to feel free. If man sees his chains, he will only want to break them. If we give men the feeling that they are free, I am convinced that they will exceed their limits. And it is only from that condition that humanity shall rise up. But do you want to dominate or raise humanity higher? I want it to advance. I want it to progress. Man is our vessel. If he progresses, then so do we. Wouldn't you like to know what we really are? Who do you mean? Demons? Yes, us. Our species. I've been searching for centuries, trying to find a way to explain the reason of our existence. But humanity has not yet evolved enough to make any progress on the subject. I am convinced that the sciences will bring that knowledge someday. So, that's your objective, is it? To understand who we are? I understand your goal, but the change you propose is not really a significant one. It is merely more smoke and mirrors. You must understand that we directly depend on men. Consequently, we have to do our utmost to help them progress and to prevent them from killing each other. As we have the power to influence their will, why not impose the desire to live in peace? We do exactly that, on a regular basis. But a leopard cannot change its spots. When the person that you inspired dies, you have to start all over again with the next one. It's painstaking work, Louis. Our family clings to its privileges and to the past, and that's how they are putting us in danger. The time has come for change. Now that you know your true nature, there are still a few things I need to teach you. What do you mean exactly? A new skill, and not the least, Louis. It's about taking control of a person. I don't see how I could do that. I shall help you the first time. How do you do it? It's an animal resonance. How it works is still a bit unclear even to us. Like a wave or a sound? That seems the most likely, yes. In my opinion, demons are capable of tuning their psychic frequency to that of others. That is why, for example, I tend to surround myself with deaf and dumb servants. The servants dressed in black. I infiltrated them. I opened a channel between them and me, and then I deprived them of speech and hearing. This way, no other demon can turn them against me. Okay. Let's not waste any more time. <laughs> I deduce that you're impatient to master what's in store for you. That is good. I thought I'd mix business with pleasure for this first time. What do you mean by that? The conference will come to a close shortly, as you know. Not that I'm fed up with archaic diplomacy, but it's time to ensure the success of this project. To make this happen, I would like Piaget to inform the Pope he has changed sides. You, you're going to use your powers to alter the votes? The real game is about to begin, Louis. Up till now, the guests have been sizing each other up. From now on, it's time for Gregory and myself to play. As well as you yourself. Now, here is my plan. I would like you to join his eminence in his room. Just play along. We'll see when the time comes. Very well. And then? You're going to have to trust me. What we're going to do is painless for the human you are going to invade. Invade? Yes. You're going to enter his mind and take control. You're going to influence his actions and his psyche. Make him speak, then concentrate. You must focus on him in order to feel his thoughts. Then, while speaking, you must link with him. Once you're done, you will naturally find your way to the source and enter into his thoughts. But what if I fail? Trust in your instincts. You just have to let yourself go. You have the skill. Let your nature come to the fore. 
You'll see. If you fail, you'll be in for some light banter with his eminence. That's all. There's nothing to be afraid of. Very well. Perfect. Go now. The Cardinal is in his room. You will have to write a letter to the Pope, as if Piaggi had written it himself. In this letter, tell the Pope that whatever happens during the conference, he must follow my propositions. But be careful. In order to protect himself from counterfeiters, the Pope had Piaggi's hand tattooed with a symbol to be sure of his identity. You'll see when you're inside him. You'll understand. Once it's written up, just bring it back to me and I'll send it off immediately. All right, I'll take care of it. Ah, well, Louis, what brings you back to my chambers? May I sit down? Of course, Louis. Don't you feel good? Yes, but if I'm gonna pass inside you, I'd better sit myself down first. It's nothing, don't worry about it. Well, what can I do for you? Right. Now I need to concentrate. I wanted to speak to you, Your Eminence. Do you believe in demons? What are you, uh, talking about, Louis? Where is he going with this? I can feel something. Demons, Your Eminence. I am a cardinal. Of course I believe in evil. What on earth is the matter with him? Is he losing his mind? All right, hang in there, Louis. Don't lose him. Rest assured, Your Eminence, uh, I'm fine. I... But... It's impossible... Rest assured, Your Eminence, I am fine. I've done it. I've done it, damn it. He was right. This is just crazy. I can't believe it. Look at yourself, Louis. You better not get caught. Whoa. I still need to get used to this body. So, let's see about what Mortimer asked me. Right. Well, it's time I got started. Let's see what I can find here to help me write that letter. I have no means to validate my forgery, so I better take my time with and not make any mistakes. There are two letters from the Pope on the desk. I should be able to get a clue or two by checking how well they correspond to each other. And here are three stamps. All are different. Right. Well, let's start writing. Lord Mortimer asked me to discredit Sir Gregory and to announce Piaggi's final vote in his favor. As an introduction, Your Holiness, thank you for your trust. It turns out, 
now that I'm here, that I find Lord Mortimer's projects grant us many more advantages in comparison to what Sir Gregory had suggested. We are talking about the future of the Holy See. Hmm, there. That should be enough to justify the change of vote. There's a kind of code composed of six letters that they always write under the dates of their correspondence. According to Mortimer, it's got something to do with Piaget's tattoo. I guess I'll have to write one for today's date. Now, ideally, it'd be better to do it without it, but I'm going to need to be extremely clever here. Today, the date is 2401-1793. And the letters from the Pope there are six letters just below the date, two just below the month, four others below the year. Piaget's tattoo, it must be used to establish a connection between the letter of the concentric circle and the number shown in the middle. Some figures are the same in both codes, yet they correspond to different letters. The day is not translated. That must be the key to the code. Today the date is 2401-1793. 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 Today the date is 24 1793 Today the date is 2401 Today is the 2401-1793. In one of the letters, the Pope asked Piaggi to change and to stop using his personal stamp. He asked him to use the one with the Pope's motto on it. And I remember that. Flore in Domo Domini. circle with a cross inside. Now, I distinctly remember this seal that Piaggi used on the letter he gave me. This isn't the same stamp. Justizia, misericordia e umulta. Boy, I gotta brush up my foreign languages. Piaggi once gave me a sealed letter. It had the same seal on it. I remember now. This seal is different to the one Piaggi used for the letter he gave me. Yes, I'm certain of it. On it is written, Flore in Domo Domini.
Your eminence, all ready to send. What's he doing here? Damn it. That's all I need. Don't worry, he can't hear us. What do you mean he can't hear us? What's going on here, Piaggi? Because the old goat is going to drop us. It's a lousy turncoat. Well, he'd better not tell me he just fell asleep. Calm down now. Monsieur de Richet came to see me because he was having anxiety attacks and wanted something to help him relax. I'm afraid I've been a little heavy-handed. <laughs> you can say that again. I was about to fetch someone to take care of him. Would you care to go? There he is, and there he stays. <laughs> the perfect opportunity. What do you mean? It's been a while now that I've been hoping for a chance to get rid of him. Can you keep a secret? Of course, my son. Would you like to tell me under the confidentiality of confession? Ah, don't talk rubbish. I don't trust the little runt because he is Mortimer's son. Would you believe it? How does he know? Dear God, how is that possible? I am flabbergasted. We've wasted enough time. What if he wakes up? If you don't want to get your hands dirty, just turn away and leave everything to me. This is not a decision to be taken lightly. You're defending him now. What are you talking about? Of course not. He's made you change sides, hasn't he? You find Louis unconscious and conclude that I'm his accomplice? It's not so much finding him here as you being against me getting rid of him. That's not what you thought the day before yesterday, after he eavesdropped on our conversation. Monsieur Von Von, I always act in the best interest of all. I assure you. Everyone's entitled to an opinion. You must have lost your mind to want to take such an extreme course of action. No one's asking you to help me do it. You can't attack him without running the risk of jeopardizing the conference. Even though Sir Gregory has the edge? No. Gregory will never forgive you. Very well, Piaggi. You win. I refuse to let you do the first thing that comes into your head. I don't know what the two of you are up to, but I'll find out sooner or later. Right. Time for me to get back into my body. Right. Don't just stand there, Louis. Mortimer's waiting for you in the Red Salon. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost.
So, Louis, what was your first time like? Bewildering, isn't it? Here's your letter. I have to admit, the experience was utterly amazing. Come, tell me more. Well, honestly, I... My stomach was just turning in circles. <laughs> that reminds me of my first time. Ooh, but you did it. Gregory, what can I do for you? I've just come to make sure dear Louis has all the information he needs. Needs for what? You are free to make your own choices, William. I would like the same for him, too. There's nothing I want more, Gregory. Your schemes will lead to your demise, brother. Don't involve Louis. He has nothing to do with all this. The end of the conference approaches, and this masquerade will soon be torn asunder. Don't drag him down with you in your disgrace. Oh, ye of little faith. On the contrary, brother, Louis has just entered the family. Give him a chance to find his place. His place? What place is that? At the end of a leash, like all the others. Don't listen to him. He's angry with our father. And with good reason. He governs us in the same way he governs humanity. Through fear and submission. Same old tune. When will you understand that it's necessary to impose order for things to move forward properly? You are under his thumb and proud of it. Open your eyes for crying out loud. His whole system has become outdated and he's too old to see it. He will lead us to our demise. Here he goes with another of his grand speeches. William has always been fond of staging big scenes. It's his theatrical side. Does he have an inferiority complex? I've told him time and time again, Louis. He always has to take it one step too far. How dare you? You are blind, brother. Even if the evidence bit you on the nose, you still wouldn't see it. I feel sorry for you. Tea is drunk hot or not at all, William. When will you learn? It's too bitter. You shouldn't let it brew so long. I knew you'd be coming along. You are so predictable. Methodical, I would say. Things must be accomplished in the right order if we want the world to keep turning as it does. Whatever the consequences? What do you mean? Let's say it hardly leaves any room for free will. Now does it? It's the adult's responsibility to provide education for their children, Louis. Our family only ensures, through its experience, that demons do not lose themselves in rash decision-making. You see, Louis, Gregory came here to make you change your mind. It's time for things to change. I acknowledge Father has done many good things for humanity, but his time is over, and now he must pass on the torch. That's enough. There, Louis. That's the pathetic example your father has to offer. I really am sorry about what happened to you. You don't know our family yet. We can't have given you a very good impression, but bear in mind that we are all against William's project. On the contrary. If he insists on going through with it, we will have no other choice than to intervene by force. Consequently, my dear Louis, you're going to have to choose sides. I would much rather have met you in different circumstances. There you are, Louis. See what happens when you don't follow their orders to the letter. Louis, I'm afraid the time to decide is now. <coughs> if you follow William, he will drag you down with him. If, on the other hand, you support me, I can assure you that nothing will happen to you. You won't be blamed for your father's errors. Ah, the masks are off. I offer you liberty. He obliges you to choose, and shamelessly asks you to betray your own father. That is their true face. Right. Before I answer, well, I'd better think it over very carefully. Do I intend to embrace my demon nature and take my place on the chessboard? Do I stay out of it and do my utmost to stop them? Or do I renounce my nature 
and do all I can to stay human. I was born a man. I, I grew up as such. Finding out that I'm a demon makes no difference. I refuse to let them manipulate humanity the way they do. They're gonna ask me to choose between them. I'll just have to go with the lesser evil of the two. But they better not count on me to keep my word. I'll bring them all down. So? <coughs> what do you choose, Louis? I shall follow my father, Sir Gregory. Very well. But don't say I didn't warn you. Please, don't take offense, but I just can't turn my back on him. That said, if he turns his back on me, I won't be slow in sticking a dagger between his shoulder blades. It's time we finished what we started, brother. The final vote of the conference over the acquisition of Louisiana will take place in a few hours. I propose you gather your troops and prepare to close the debate. That's precisely what I was going to suggest. Come, follow me. It's time for us to get ready. Do you really think we have a chance of winning? A chance? <laughs> you don't know me very well, Louis. We are going to win. But it only takes one person to vote against us, and we'll have lost. That's true. That's why none of them will. Why? Because I have an asset that they do not. Which is? You. My friends, prepare yourselves. The conference is about to resume. The time has come to lay down all our cards. 